Hi all, today I am going to show my curriculum header CV which got me into several PhD positions in USA and several PhD interviews were in all over Europe. So this is the CV I used to apply with. So and people who are coming for the first time in my channel, I want to say that I am an incoming PhD student at University of Wisconsin Medicine in Microbiology and uh, I create contents on PhD abroad, how to succeed yourself in application of abroad. So after applying to lot of positions, I can say the CV is the one of the most important thing through which you will be able to advertise yourself. And CV is the platform where you can show all your achievements, degree, etc. To show the recruiters that you have all the things they wanted for that position and they are looking for. So this CV is from the last year when I was applying for the PhD positions. So many things have been changed now, but I wanted to show the one which I was with applying. So first thing is to mention the name in bold and you can increase a little bit of font size also. So here I have used 18 font size and the Times New Roman in all of them. Uh, but uh, after the second line, all the fonts are in uh, a similar format like the 11, size 11. And uh, you should keep uh, stick with that thing only. So then you should mention what are the position you are in what position you are working right now, and we in which institute or university. So like if you are a student, so you can mention you are master student at this university, and then you can mention your email ID, phone number, the address uh, right now where you are present, not like uh, the address where you are in. in like the permanent address it is not need to be and uh, the ORC ID so the ORC ID is a unique researcher ID this makes your CV a little bit more professional and uh, when you don't have uh, a paper or some uh, things online you don't need to be mention the ORC ID it is only in, uh, if you have uh, some research uh, articles published online then you can uh, do these things and also the google scholar link uh, if you have also published something you can mention the google scholar it is a very uh, much popular platform uh, for the researchers and uh, if you don't have any published uh, things uh, then you can of course mention the linkedin profile okay so the linkedin profile is also very popular uh, and these things uh, little bit things makes your CV a little professional this will be always a hyperlink so if they tap on your uh, on this Google Scholar link and uh, press the control, it will be open. Okay, and uh, now the education section. So, the first thing you need to show what the degree you have, and in this education section, you will mention all the degrees, marks, uh, the time periods of these degrees, where you have obtained this degree, the location, then uh, during the degree, what are the achievements you have accomplished. Okay, so if you have uh, during your masters, if you have done some uh, project works, course works, and uh, like something significant, not like uh, in a class you are on genetics you are mentioning, not like that. Uh, so some internship if you have done the advisor name. So these things are uh, you can mention, and also if you have uh, some rank like first or second or third in the class like that, you also you, you can mention. And in BSc also, this is the same thing in which subject and then the percentage or the CGPA. And then uh, if you have something to show, I did not have that much things to show in BSc. So the next, so the next thing comes the research experience. And here you can mention all the projects you have worked with, like the it is it don't need to be like a work experience. Okay, it's the research experience. So. Here you can mention, of course, if you have worked somewhere and also if you have done some projects during your bachelor's, master's, some research projects. Okay, uh, So that is also can be considered as a research experience. So as I have mentioned, like the project assistant, so and uh, then the research uh, training. So this research training in EOLO line, this is actually uh, the positions I have worked during my master's. And uh, I have always, so you can mention the advisor name, uh, their email ID, like the university email ID, not the Gmail ID, and the, the, the duration of that project, and also uh, the, the place where you have worked on. So the next thing, now the important thing uh, to showcase your publications. Okay, if you have something, of course, 
So keep the uh, recent one on the top and keep your name, journal name in bold. Uh, like here it is mentioned. And then the mention your DOI, the document identification number uh, if you have published, published something. And in that it will be a hyperlink of the paper. Okay, so like that they can quickly access your uh, paper. And and here you can mention all the like journals which have not uh, like only the journals. Here you can mention the conference articles also. If it is in online publicly accessible, you can mention anything. So if it, you don't have any like DOI, so DOI is only for the article journals or the reviews. But if you have something article in published in some news or somewhere, so you can just uh, paste the copy paste the link of the total uh, article. Okay, so like that here it is mentioned. It is an internship just of two months. So now the skill section. In the skill, uh, you should divide uh, the skills according to you, their types and think about the skills you have obtained. So, like for me, it was like molecular biology techniques, microbiology techniques, and the bioinformatics. So two types of techniques in wet lab and one from the dry lab. So it is very important uh, to divide the skills as uh, the recruiters will not be able to uh, know what you are actually wanted to show them if it is not divided so skills so skills don't need to be only knowing to use some techniques it can be something like you know a how to make the total experiment or performing some assays so like the protein expression uh, purification by nickel nta method which comes in the molecular biology section and also like isolation of bacterial genome dna rna pcr these are the like some techniques okay now like pcr is a, PCR is a machine uh, so these machines also you can uh, write okay so like spectrophotometer those things and in the microbiology section you can write like about like culturing you know, some bacteria biofilm uh, quantification by crystal violet assay mm, so these things if you know you can write uh, about that and think uh, how you can divide your skills into like minimum two sections uh, and it is better to mention like three sections in three sections okay and it is based on your subject actually and if you know like computer languages like python r Perl, mention that in bioinformatics section like uh, the dry lab section now you can mention about the research projects briefly which you have work or working on right now so the main thing about this section is to elaborate the projects which you have mentioned before okay uh, so if you have space you can mention these things uh, like the title of the project then the duration uh, and if it is working then you can uh, write like one words and also the advisor name and the place where you are doing that thing and the research highlights so in the research highlights mention about the aim of the project uh, and then the contribution and the significant experiment from yourself the contribute how you have contributed in that project and the findings and uh, if it is already published then you can of course mention the findings but if it is not and uh, you don't want to disclose everything then you can mention like possibly it can happen like that okay so like that you can mention uh, whatever projects you have done and uh, like one two three four five okay fine and uh, so after that the conference so the next part is mentioning the conferences seminars or the poster or the oral presentation you have given so the date place and the sponsors you should mention there and it is better if you have some poster presentation during those seminars and the date also you can mention so then the awards if you have got any academic achievements like first or second positions or track any competitive exams for higher studies like national eligibility test, NET, or GATE, you can mention those things. But there is a point to be aware of that whenever you are mentioning you qualified some exams for PhD in India or in your country, then the interviewer can ask why you are not doing PhD in India if you are applying in abroad. Okay, so you have to be aware of that and uh, you need to be prepared of that um, kind of uh, situation. So you can say I want to explore uh, more opportunities or only few of the Indian institutions have good research infrastructures. So a lot of competitions are there. So, or you can uh, say um, the I want to work uh, on 
something which is not so many people are working on India and uh, they are not expertise with this research field. Like that, you have to tackle those questions. If you have some certificates, you can show that thing in the next column. Uh, like the internship or significant online courses you can mention those things and the last thing is giving references so in some applications there are a separate place to put the names uh, of referees but if there is nothing mentioned uh, in the application section then you can give some one to two references recommended to give one recommendation from recent supervisor uh, with whom you have worked and also uh, one from your master's or bachelor's uh, academics uh, university okay and uh, their contact details and official email id and relation how you know them uh, as a person and also let uh, them know and uh, or ask before putting their names uh, in your cv as they will be aware of this and last but not the least uh, like it is not a mandatory thing but uh, you can mention beyond academics thing uh, if you have some space left in your cv and uh, to tell something unique uh, like it really like matters for the society not like uh, you have you know how to play guitar or swimming those things you cannot mention okay mention only the things which you have done yourself don't mention things you have never done yourself like you will get of course get caught during the interview or later for some time and don't copy and paste the content from this cv be creative as this video will be seen by so many students so when you are sending mails to professors and attaching the cv with that the cv should be within one to two page maximum as a professor does not have time to read a four page of CV. And when you are applying for an advertised position, check if there is in some guidelines is mentioned about uploading the CV. And if there is nothing mentioned, then you can keep your CV within two to three page. And as you can mention most of the relevant things within that. So you can always make two types of CV, one short, within one to one and a half page uh, with the most significant things and one having all the projects elaborated briefly and that can be two to three page and maximum three and half page hope this video was helpful for you and uh, subscribe to my channel for upcoming phd upload contents and uh, do like and share this video and comment below what you want to hear from me the next time